In the year 3000, there are many amazing advancements in medicine, but that hasn't always ensured the best treatment. If a patient doesn't end up at Taco Bellevue Hospital, they may be subjected to a visit with a company doctor or field medic. And trust us, sometimes those visits are worse than whatever is being treated. Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and today we'll be ranking Futurama moments from gruesome to most gruesome. The Rules Just a couple of notes about creator decisions. We'll be looking at cringeworthy moments from all seasons. There were a lot of injuries, so in the interest of keeping our list down to a manageable size, we try to avoid as many duplicates as possible. This means that if characters lose the same limb more than once, we try to find the most interesting time and talk only about that. Likewise, we know that different people are grossed out by different areas of bodily harm, so we did our best to pick a selection of horrifying concepts, detailed animation, and symbolic harm that would make anyone squirm in their seats. So with that said, let's jump right in! First, we have the gross. These are the lightest moments of gruesomeness. While not as hard to watch as some of the more violent injuries, we wouldn't say that they're exactly fun to see or hear. First is Fry's date with the Radiator Woman from the Radiator Planet. We wanted to ease you in. This is a moment that we don't see so much as here, and it's thanks to Billy West's amazing voice acting that it was even considered for our list. When the Planet Express crew is delivering the Miss Universe crown, there are all sorts of beautiful alien women representing their respective home planets. Fry makes the decision to brag to his friends about scoring with the Radiator Woman from the Radiator Planet. When he's informed that there is no Radiator Planet, and therefore no Radiator Woman, his voice turns into a groan, and he asks if there's a burn ward nearby. Since his face looks okay, we have to wonder what part of him got burned. There wasn't much to see, but sometimes it's our imaginations that are the most gruesome of all. Following that is Leela's squishy eye. This is also tame, unless you're sensitive to eyes being touched. A lot of our viewers get squeamish about eyeballs, and unfortunately for them, Leela and her one big eye seem unbothered by it. We included this moment because this caused no pain for the character in question, and was still uncomfortable to watch. When Leela is contemplating getting a cosmetic procedure to give her two eyes, she asks the iconic and eloquent question, me, normal? Ah, how many of us relate to that concept, feeling utterly unattainable? This is accentuated with her whole hand first going to her eye and then pressing on it until it squishes down under her fingertips. While it was probably no more dramatic for her than, say, putting in a contact lens, there is something deeply uncomfortable about having a whole hand pressed down on an eyeball. Next is Bender's Antenna Amputation We didn't include many robot injuries. The show is less than consistent in how robots experience pain, which made it hard for us to rank. Plus, Bender's put through the ringer so many times that we could have basically compromised the whole video just for damage he sustains. But we would be remiss if we didn't include the self-harm he inflicts upon himself when he cuts off his own antenna. This was early in the season when he and Fry were trying to find an apartment together. The whole setup is not only heartbreaking, but gruesome in robot terms. Bender is day sober, and you can see the rush shadow forming around his mouth. His movements are shaky, his words slurred, and no one is there to stop him when he takes a pair of gardening shears to his most important body part. The moment was over quick and wasn't much gore, but for a robot, this is as bad as it gets. Look, you wouldn't want the human equivalent happening to any of you meatbags there at home. Speaking of human injuries, let's move back to Fry for our next entry, Slurm Cap Stuck in Throat. There were many gross things in this episode. The harmful radioactive rays, the discovery of how slurm is made, the bloodshot eyes of the overworked party worm. But the moment we chose is Fry almost choking to death on the winning slurm cap. He drinks it down, the metal lodging in his throat. As if the choking weren't bad enough, the professor's x-ray beam showed how bad the cap got stuck. Poor Fry, and poor everyone who had to see, Shellless Zoidberg. Like Leela's eye squishing, this was not physically harmful, but our faces here in Wicked Binge Towers perfectly mirrored the disgust of the Planet Express crew as Dr. Zoidberg came onto the screen, naked. Not just without his clothes, mind you, but without his shell. Watching the grayish-pink puddle of jelly waddle around and air out all his slimy folds was unpleasant. We know that biologically it's different to walk around without a shell than it is to walk around without skin, but it evokes many of the same emotions from the audience, disgust, and a deep questioning of why. 
Our next entry covers a flashback that traumatized the best bureaucrat on the show. I'm just like Hermes. During the crew's brief vacation aboard the Space Titanic, we learn why Hermes gave up his professional limboing career. He inspired a child to do a dangerous limbo stunt that his poor legs just couldn't take. He runs at the limbo stick, shouting, I'm just like Hermes, before his body snaps. I'm just like Hermes! But wonder why he gave up the sport, if his prowess can inspire something so awful. We now move to the severing of Fry's hand-eye coordination lobe. This episode was gross eating a gas station vending machine egg salad sandwich, traveling inside a Planet Express employee, none of this was a comfortable watch. Fry's carelessness in what he puts into his body lands him with parasitic worms. They actually treat his body better than he does. They work his muscles, they get pathways in his brains firing again, and they start fighting off other potentially harmful invaders. There were so many moments we could have chosen to be on this list. The tomato in the sandwich, the sound Fry's stomach makes, Zoidberg's avatar riding on a single sperm, all of it was bad. But the crowning moment of gross, or perhaps just a gross moment that symbolizes the episode best, is when Fry severs the lobe in his brain that is responsible for his hand-eye coordination. His intentions are good. He wants to prove to himself that as Leela falls for him, she's falling for the real him and not just for the parasites. Unfortunately, his willingness to put himself in harm's way for love actually makes him more stupid. But he proves the parasites wrong, as they believe that no one would willingly make an idiot of themselves. When that lobe is severed, he loses control of himself, dealing more than the intended amount of damage to his brain. Following that is the Human Horn Erotica. Human Horn is the street name for a human's nose. Aliens believe it to be an aphrodisiac. They also believe it to be an entirely different part of the human, but that's neither here nor there. In an episode where human noses are being poached and sold for their alleged properties in the bedroom, we're treated to some alien erotica showing the act. If you're not grossed out yet, you might be when you see how the nose is being shredded right onto the aliens. Sure, the amputation of the nose is painless, and the nose isn't the worst part of the human they could have taken, but seeing nose flakes being grated on aliens trying to get in the mood is just not why we tune into this show. If that is why you tune into the show, you may want to seek help. Rounding out the tier is the moment where Fry leaks out an emperor. Fry just can't catch a break, can he? While traveling to a planet ruled by assassins, Fry accidentally becomes an emperor. He drinks a bottle of what turned out to be the previous emperor and is therefore crowned instead. Unfortunately, his physiology means that the emperor doesn't die. He just sits in Fry's stomach until he has the opportunity to make his presence known. Since Fry is, and we quote, too macho and manly to cry the emperor out through emotional manipulation, Leela enlists the help of everyone to beat the emperor out of him. It was a violent scene that doesn't even end when the emperor is out, since he also wants a turn to beat up Fry. We now move to our second tier, the gory. These are moments that were more than a little unpleasant for both the viewers and the victims. While not fatal in most cases, they would be a terrible way to go. First are the husk of Langdon Cobb's victims. This is the least bloody entry in this section, but we feel it bears mentioning. Bender makes a discovery about famed actor Langdon Cobb. He's an alien monster that is using his acting fame to feed off of the people's adoration. He does this as a less violent alternative to stealing the life force of anyone who sees his real face, that being what his race is known for. Unfortunately, Bender makes this discovery after he's gotten a photo of Langdon's face and shown it to people, who instantly wither up as flat, lifeless husk. Watching their life force glow out of every orifice as they deflate was more eerie than gory, but it gets overlooked. That being said, the moment we specifically chose was during Bender's final showdown with Langdon Cobb, where the skins of the Planet Express crew are hanging up on a rack. Definitely not a pleasant sight. Next is Fry's head on Amy's body. Let's put a pin in the sitcom-style hilarity that originates from Fry and Amy sharing a body after Fry decides they need more space from one another. Now let's look at the horror of the car crash, coupled with the fright of waking up on someone else's body. While it may be some of Zoidberg's best work, there are still thick stitches keeping Fry attached to Amy's shoulder while his body recovers. It's none too comfortable to look at, much less live with. It gets far worse when Amy's date drives Fry to try and pull his own head 
off with one of Amy's arms. While it does work out with a level of surgical competence never seen again by Dr. Zoidberg, the episode leaves Amy with a disfiguring scar from the procedure. Now, if you'll forgive us getting momentarily meta, we have a show within a show moment. The Scary Door, The Library episode. Fans of The Twilight Zone may have been too offended by this loving parody to notice, but the library episode of The Scary Door is actually gruesome. It parodies the classic episode where the last man in the world finally has all the time he wants to read, but can't because his glasses are broken. The Scary Door version takes it a few steps further by making the man lose not just his glasses, but also his eyes and hands. So much for the large print and braille editions of his favorite literary works. Next is Leela Spice Weasel Eye. We've already had Leela's eye on the list once, but this was animation genius that we couldn't leave off. Have you ever touched your eye with jalapeno juice still on your fingers? Remember how badly that burned? Well, imagine Leela with her above average amount of eye being totally blinded by a BAM from Elzar Spice Weasel. Not only is it painful to think about and easy to sympathize with, but the animation was very detailed. Unlike some of the previous entries and even a few upcoming ones, we get to see this in all of its glory, even if we didn't want to. And seriously, we dare you to pause on a still of that bloodshot eye and really look at it without your own eyes watering. No wonder Elzar feels bad enough to scam them into eating at his restaurant. Next is Fry Loses an Arm and the Reattachment Surgery. Actually, we want to focus mostly on the reattachment surgery. Fry loses a lot of limbs. We had to amputate a lot of them from our list. But we included this because Zoidberg's treatment of his patient was gruesome. The limb is lost in the Decapodian tradition of claw plotch, where Fry and Zoidberg fight to the death over the shared affection of a woman, or Zoidberg's affection of a woman, who has affections for Fry, if we're going to be technical. Fry shows mercy to his friend and disregard of the tradition, deciding not to take the life of his alien co-worker. Unfortunately, Zoidberg takes Fry's arm in the arena. When he goes to reattach it, his lack of understanding of human anatomy comes back to bite Fry, and the entire surgery consists of trial and error. The limb is put back on the wrong spot before having to be amputated and replaced multiple times. While we're speaking of missing limbs, let's get one more double whammy in there. Two floating arms. This is actually one of the more romantic injuries of the show, and therefore one of the most gruesome signs of love. When Mars floats past Earth on its collision course, Fry wants nothing more than to rescue the injured Leela who's stranded on the planet. She can't jump because of her broken leg, and he does his best to reach out to her. This rips her arm off and leaves Fry still brandishing the severed limb bone first. He wants her to try reaching out again, but they're further away this time, so instead of grabbing his free hand, she has no choice but to grab her own severed arm, which Fry is holding out to her. Unfortunately, she grips it tightly enough to rip off the arm Fry is holding Leela's arm with. Luckily, Scruffy is able to get Leela off the drifting planet before her demise, and the couple live long enough for the professor to grow them new arms. This is only after we've been treated to a shot of both severed arms, still holding hands, drifting through space. It was sort of romantic, for a gruesome moments list. This is featured in an episode where Bender is trying to scare Fry to death and is all too happy to project the violent sight for his former best friend. All the flesh melts off a screaming skull until there's nothing left but grimacing bone. It was enough to complete his end of the bargain with the robot devil, but it was more than enough to scare us. We follow that with Hermes being attacked with a skin peeler. Okay, we're sure it's a potato peeler, but if you use it to peel skin, that makes it a skin peeler. And that's exactly what crazy robot Roberto does when he's trying to attack Hermes. Now, a robot peeling a human so he can eat the skin is gruesome, as is coming at a person with a peeler set aside for that express purpose. But there was something a little unsettling about the simple and effective animation that went along with the peeling of Hermes' arm. It's one small rind of skin, and that was gross to say out loud, but the light pink wound underneath is hard to keep your eyes away from. Luckily, La Barbara's reckless seasoning saves the day, and we're not subjected to any more of that particular scheme, though one could argue that the rest of the episode was gruesome in its own right. We do, after all, get to see Zoidberg make a Hermes puppet out of actual Hermes parts, and then see the entirety of Hermes' brain before it's put back into the stitched-up body. 
but for whatever reason, the scene with the skin peeler really sticks out. We move on to Fry's pineapple crown. In a blink and you'll miss it moment, Fry injures himself with a pineapple crown. Where most people would have made a decorative fruit crown with less dangerous and lighter fruit, we know from experience, Fry is not most men. We have to give him some credit, the crown in all of its glory does look very regal while it sits on his head. Unfortunately, the pineapples prove too heavy. The crown slides down Fry's face, breaking his head in 360 degrees with their sharp spikes. It may not be the most memorable entry, but it's not fun to watch either. Rounding out the middle tier is the Thompson's Teeth commercial. Have you ever wondered who brings you Futurama? Well, don't. If you do, you'll have to have your question answered with the Thompson's Teeth commercial. It's only 12 seconds and there's no blood, but there is the tagline of, the only teeth strong enough to eat other teeth. The only teeth strong enough to eat other teeth. If that doesn't have you grinding your own teeth in dread, then the audio of teeth crunching other teeth surely will. And finally, to our last tier, the truly gruesome. These are grisly deaths or fates that are arguably worse than death. It won't surprise you at this point to learn Fry is kicking off this tier for when he was covered in severe burns. This episode took strange turns with multiple robot impersonators and several flashbacks, but the moment in question is right at the beginning, when our protagonist wants to know why his Fry Fro is all frizzy. This is followed up with the question of why he's all burnt up. When the picture zooms out, we see that he's indeed covered in a myriad of full body burns, some of which seem to be sticking out of his shirt. It was one of the most gruesome single shots in the series, and was probably one of the first that came to mind when you saw the title of this video. Next is the polar plunge into the Ammonia River. Of course, this ends badly. The news coverage shows the polar plungers all lined up and ready to jump. It's only their bones that resurface, however, as the ammonia burns clean through their bodies, the smoke rising all the while. We have a lot of questions as to how this became a tradition, but perhaps we shouldn't be surprised in a future that invents and provides suicide boots. Now is Norman and the Fountain of Aging. When a spa youthanizes the professor a little too well, the Planet Express crew starts aging in reverse, becoming younger and younger. This is one thing for the humans, but we get to see a lot of unusual stages of development from Dr. Zoidberg, the decapod. The solution to their problem lies in the Fountain of Aging. It's able to cure the professor, Fry, Amy, and Leela. Unfortunately, it doesn't go as well for Norman, a sibling that grew off of the de-aged Zoidberg. He breaks off of John and gets lost in the depths of the swirling fountain, rapidly aging and decaying in front of our very eyes. Next is Benitus. In a cryogenic support group meeting, Fry meets someone frozen from roughly the same time period as he was, Steve Castle. He froze himself because there was no cure for his terminal case of benitis. It was a good plan to be cryogenically frozen and then defrosted in a time period that had a cure for the disease. Even though there is presumably a cure in the year 3000, Steve is too busy sharking his way into a corporate takeover of Planet Express to get the life-saving treatment that he needs. As such, we get to see just how horrible of a death that is. His body twists and contorts, bones cracking and snapping in each new torture position. It's a slow and painful death that gives Castle plenty of time to regret his mistake. All the while, he pulls his eyelids open so his eyes bulge at the disturbing display. Next is the iPhone installation. If this is a commonplace practice in the year 3000, I think we're all grateful to be back here in the 21st century. Mom's iPhone is a hands-free device that can do everything your smartphone of today can do, but cleaner and more seamlessly. It checks your email, you can play games, edit yourself into your favorite shows, record, and of course, take phone calls. There are a lot of perks to being a twit, but the installation process is so, so much worse than having a current day cell phone. The iPhone gets its name because it's implanted under your eyelid where it lodges next to your eye. And it's not a medical procedure. They'll just shove it in at the eye store. This isn't just hard to watch, but it also hurts like hell if Fry's screams of pain are anything to go by. Considering it updates as much as iOS does today, the whole system starts to look a little hellish. Next is some alien medicine, acupuncture. In a callback to Fry's early failings on this list, he returns from a cactus planet with a literal handful of needles. Leela is lecturing him all the while about how even in the year 3000, most inanimate objects are just objects and not an alien race in hiding. With his bloody, skewered hand, he goes to Dr. Zoidberg's office. There, he's prescribed an acupuncture treatment. That turns out to be nothing but a book slamming against the needles already in his hand, splintering them and making the blood gush out. This is not for the faint of heart. 
But there is still worse to come. In our penultimate spot, we have when Leela finds Lando. Lando was the captain of the first ever Planet Express crew. He was attacked by a four-dimensional space whale that haunts the Bermuda Tetrahedron. Leela becomes obsessed with finding the remains of the previous Planet Express crew and slaying the whale. Little does she know that she is the whale, just as Lando is the whale. The whale feeds off the obsessive nature of captains, which absorbs into its system to sustain itself. When Leela finds Lando, he's all but entirely digested into the massive space mammal, missing chunks of flesh and mostly melted into the larger body. That may not be the worst moment of the episode, but it's also not super fun to watch Leela as she operates the whale back to Earth by letting it attach itself to her. And finally, for the most gruesome moment of Futurama, Fry's fall of the Vampire State Building. Talk about a fate worse than death. Fry falls off the tallest building in New New York while carrying a time button. The button moves the world back 10 seconds in time, but also takes 10 seconds to recharge. Unfortunately for Fry, he was falling more than 10 seconds before he remembered to hit the button. This puts him in the uncomfortable position of having to press the button every 10 seconds or hitting the pavement and meeting his demise. Now, if the idea of an endless fall has you uneasy, imagine how much worse it gets for him when a delay causes him to actually hit the ground. In a bittersweet development, Leela picks up the button and presses it, sending him back just a few seconds to before his death. Unfortunately, she has to keep pressing the button to bring him back, and he remembers each painful splatter against the pavement. Not only is it a bloody death that we see in full detail, it keeps happening, to the point that Fry even begins to envy those with nightmares of falling. Well, at least they wake up before they die. Fry can't ever do that. All right, we're done. Our rankings of Futurama moments from gruesome to most gruesome. What do you think was the hardest moment to watch? Were there any we missed? Let us know in the comments down below, as well as any video topics you'd like to see us cover. Don't forget while you're down there to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our gruesome list. And as always, stay wicked.